you're yeah. very critical yes. of the leaders of the, of, of yes. the feminist uh, yes. movement. Yes. Give me your case. Well, I just think it was, I, I, I think I should say that so much of the advice, certainly our very own mothers gave us, was well-intentioned. Mm -hmm. They did see, they didn't want you to be limited. They, it's a wonderful Get thought. Get an education, sky's, make yeah, sure that you've got the professional uh, options. But also just live your dreams. Yes. I mean, that's a wonderful message. Uh, the trouble was they didn't tell us that dreams also include family. My mother did, God bless her. She's, <laughs> I've been blessed with a very sensible mother who, even while encouraging me to, to write and do other things, always said to me, never forget that there is nothing like being a mother. And in her own example, you could see there was also nothing like having a good marriage. Mm -hmm. that, that those two things were probably more important than anything else that you could do. Um, but uh, I think when you're, 20, when you're in your early 20s, you can't know what it's like to have kids. You can't know what it's like to be married. And you do look to older women, mothers, aunts, teachers, to tell you. And in that sense, I think we did get a bad message. And I think organized feminism, um, while inspiring a lot of women like our mothers, also al always is and always was a very ideological political movement. Um, and, and that's why it, it, it failed us. Um, um, and it's always uh, been very hostile to criticism, as I've personally uh, <laughs> discovered. No, it doesn't brook dissent. It doesn't brook criticism. Um, they believe women should be in the workforce full time. And that's why they're so keen on daycare and not on, less keen on things like flex time or part time. But they're also trying to say, and, and again, this goes but devaluing motherhood. They're trying to say that being a mother and father should be the same thing, that you should both be, have these androgynous roles within the house. And they devalue not only the contribution and the desires that women have as mothers, make as mothers, but also what fathers do as well. You know, and, and, and I think what we no longer value is the, the different contributions we make as mothers and fathers and to marriages. You have a great line in your book. You said, you can have it all, but you can't have it all all at once. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I guess the, the, the ending question is, great, how? Well, that's my, this is my, you know, my little uh, prescription is start thinking about marriage earlier than we do now. Not at 28, but at 22 or 3. Seriously about it. Um, and doing it earlier than we do now. Think about having children earlier than it is now. Don't think by putting them off you're making it easier for yourself because you're not. And this is, I think, the other reason that I, I don't like uh, the feminist movement very much is it's, it's absolutely hateful towards men. I mean, my goodness, I sat in the Library of Congress day That's in, day out. That's kind of old stereotype. Modern oh, women. Oh, no, it's not. It's They're, still prevalent, Oh, you my think. Goodness, institutional, but you read the textbooks that they're putting out to give to colleges today. Uh, you just read their stuff. They, I mean, really, the only way, according to their worldview, that you could be a woman and retain any self-respect is to go join some iso isolationist female community and have a cat and, and become a lesbian. I mean, they, they just don't want anything to do with men. They hate men. They call men oppressors. They hate little boys. I mean, they just, they just hate the whole thing. And, and it's a very hate-filled movement. Daniel Crittenden, I want to thank you very much for joining me. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you.